Hey guys, Help HQ here. Do you have an old iMac that looks like this? Well, if you do, we're going to help you get the dust off and make this thing usable in 2021. Cue the intro. Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about how to install a new operating system on your iMac to give it life in 2021. And that operating system is going to be none other than Linux. The hardest part about this is going to be deciding which distribution you want to install. But before we get into that, we need to discuss a couple of things. Okay, so first off, uh, there are two different models of these iMacs. There's an early 2006 iMac and there's a late 2006 iMac. Both of them use 32-bit EFIs, and what that means is it's the extensible firmware interface. And that basically just tells the computer how it's going to load the operating system. The main difference here is if you have an early 2006 iMac, it's going to come with an Intel Core Duo processor, which is 32-bit, as opposed to an Intel Core 2 Duo, which is 64-bit in the late models. What does that mean to you? Okay, so... If you have an Intel Core Duo or an early 06 iMac, you can only use 32-bit Linux distributions. So in the file name, it'll say i386, and that's because your processor is only 32-bit and it's not possible to use a 64-bit ISO file. If you have a late model 2006, which is what we're going to be using for this video, it will have the Intel Core 2 Duo which has a 64-bit processor, but for some reason Apple put 32-bit EFIs on them. So we can use a patched version of a 64-bit ISO, and we're going to get into that right now. The first thing you guys are going to want to do is determine which distribution you want to use. And if you're not familiar with Linux, then I recommend just watching some YouTube videos on like top Linux distributions and find one that's going to fit your guys' needs and also that you like visually. All the links for everything we're going to be doing are going to be in the description below. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head over to a website called mattgadient.com and this is going to be the full guide for what we're going to do. This guide will also apply to the early Mac Pro towers as well as the all white or all black model MacBooks. This website shows different distributions that uh, has already been compiled. So if you are interested in using Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Elementary OS, Fedora, any of these, they might not be the most current version, but they're already compiled. And you can download them, burn them, and install them without doing any of the work that we're going to do from option two on this website. So for this video, I am running Fedora 33. So I'm going to download the file that says iso mac prog .gz for the Linux version. If you are going to do this on the iMac that we are going to be installing Linux on, then you're going to want to use the Mac OS version. Or if you just have another computer that's running Mac OS or Linux, you need to choose the correct operating system. So for this, I decided to use Pop OS. And I'm going to download Pop OS 2010, but you could use Pop OS uh, 20.04 LTS or uh, long term support if, if you choose to do that. These iMacs did not come with NVIDIA drivers. Uh, they, whether you have an early or a late model, they both have ATI Radeon, so you do not need the NVIDIA ISO. If you choose to do this on like an early Mac Pro, then you would need the NVIDIA uh, ISO. Another option you have is to use Ubuntu Mate, and I've included a link for an already compiled version there. So you can get 18.10 or 20.04 if you uh, would like that. After you download the distribution that you want, you're going to head back over to the Matt Gadient website and you're going to download the ISO Mac prog file. You're going to want to extract the contents of that file and place them in the same folder that you put your Linux distribution that you just downloaded. I've already done this. The next step is going to be 
to run some terminal commands to make the file executable. If you're trying to do this on the iMac that we're going to be flashing Linux on, or you have another computer that has Mac OS, you're going to want to do the following commands in terminal, or you can uh, unzip or unarchive the file, open terminal in that folder, and then just do the last line here where it says chmod plus x. That's the, the line that's going to be changing the file to make it executable. If you're on Linux, there's an easier way to do this where we don't need to use terminal. You just go to the file that you extracted. We're going to right click on it, go to properties. We're going to click permissions and we're going to make sure that the box is checked that says allow executing file as a program. So once we have that done, we can close this out. We can close the window out for our folder and then we can go ahead and we can open up terminal. And we want to make sure that we're opening terminal in the destination that the files are located. <clears throat> the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this program is actually working. So we're going to type dot forward slash ISO Mac prog and we're going to hit enter or return. And we should get a result of no ISO name assigned. And that means that the, the program is working. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to type CP, the name of the ISO, and then whatever you want to name the ISO after the download name. And that's going to copy the ISO so that we're not messing with the original version that we downloaded. So if you mess this up or something happens, you don't have to re-download the file. Uh, we already have the original intact so that we could redo this. So here I'm typing pop hyphen os underscore 20.10 underscore amd64 underscore intel underscore 10.iso because that's the name of my original file and then i'm going to rename this pop os mac version dot iso and press return and when it does this we should get a new file as you can see there it populated in my folder so there's my new file that we're going to use. <clears throat> so now we're going to type dot forward slash ISO Mac prog space and then whatever you named the file that we just created. And this is what's going to patch the file in order to be able to boot on our Mac. And it should be almost instantaneous like you see here. In order to verify that it worked, if you're running Mac OS, you're going to type MD5 and then the name of the original ISO. And then we're going to do that again, and we're going to do it with the ISO that we just created. Since I'm running Linux, I'm going to do MD5 sum and then the name of the original ISO and then the name of the one that we just did. And we should get a result where the, the numbers do not match. And if, as long as they don't match, then we know that it worked. And as you can see here, they do not match, which means that the, the program worked as it should. So the next thing we want to do is you're going to want to burn this ISO to disk. So since I'm on Linux, uh, I'm going to be using a different program than what you're probably going to use. If you're on a Mac and you have, uh, you could use this with disk utility or you could, uh, if you have, I think it's Toast, uh, whatever program you have, they can burn an ISO file. One thing I recommend doing is changing your burn speed so that it's not burning at maximum. You wanna try and do it at the slowest speed possible. Um, and, and that's it for this part. So uh, next up, uh, we'll be back as soon as this is done burning. Just a side note before we get started, not all distributions are going to work for this. Some are going to give you errors, you might get a black screen, some might not load at all. It's totally going to be a, a trial by fire here on this. So if you burn one copy and for whatever reason it doesn't work, I suggest just trying uh, a different version. After we've got our disk burned, you're going to want to fire up your iMac and put the disk into the DVD drive and hold down the Alt if you're using a Windows keyboard or the Option key if you're using a Mac keyboard until you get a, a boot screen that looks like this. You should see your hard drive. 
and then eventually the disc that we just burned should pop up. Um, in some cases, you might get two discs. One will say Windows and one will say EFI Boot. I've had better luck personally using the one that says Windows because it tends to burn or load the Linux distribution as a live CD uh, rather than using the legacy mode. Alternatively, you can also just stick the disc in and it should just boot. If it doesn't, you could try holding down the C key on your keyboard and that should force it to boot from the disc. And here's a, a zoom in of, of what it should look like. If you need to eject the disc for whatever reason, um, you're going to want to press the command key and then E on boot and that should force the disc to eject. Or if you're using a Windows keyboard, it would be the Windows key and then E. So once the, the disc starts to load, you're going to start to see a bunch of text that's going to look similar to this screen. And then the following few screens, don't be worried. Eventually you will get a environment that is a graphical user interface. On the following screen, if you see something like this, it just means that your Wi-Fi drivers were not detected. And we will cover this uh, later in the video. This is going to be standard if you're in trying to install a variant of Linux that is based off of Ubuntu but it should be an easy fix. The installation process is going to be pretty straightforward. So you're just going to follow all the prompts, pick your language, uh, set your username up and all that. When you get to the point where it asks you about your hard drive and how you want to install it, you're going to need to make a decision whether you want to erase the entire hard drive and do a clean install. Uh, if you're savvy enough, you can do your own partitions manually. Um, or if you're in doubt and you don't know which one to pick, I would default to install, installing alongside OS X. This way, if for whatever reason the Linux install does not work, you still have your Mac operating system to fall back on. Doing it this way also allows you to make sure that everything works within the Linux distribution that you installed before you completely wipe your hard drive. So once you've checked everything out, made sure your Wi-Fi worked and it's up to par, you can always go back and reinstall it and erase your hard drive at that point. I would also make sure you have a copy of OS X Lion handy. That way, if anything goes wrong, you can fall back on that as a reinstallation disk. Here we have some screenshots of some of the different versions of Linux that I tried to install. So we did Debian, I did Pop! OS, and then I have a, a couple of videos that actually show us using Ubuntu Mate. And so as you can see here, it actually, the Ubuntu Mate worked pretty good. Um, right out of the box, we'll show you here that we're running uh, the full version. This isn't in a, a virtual box or anything like that. Uh, it's 20.04.1 LTS, which I got from the link that's uh, in the description. You can see we have three gigs of RAM. I'm running a Core 2 Duo processor and I have the ATI video card. Uh, overall, the resources on this aren't too bad. You can see our CPU usage is low. Memory, we're using about 25% of our memory, which could be better depending on the distribution, but uh, overall it doesn't seem to be impacting the, the system at all. Uh, from here, we're going to go ahead and uh, just open up Firefox and see if we can get a YouTube video to play. I like to always use the Blender video, which is the, the Buck Bunny because it's open source and I don't have to worry about any kind of uh, copyright stuff. So once we get this all typed in and loaded up, you'll see that everything seems to be loading quickly. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any issues. We'll go ahead and uh, make the screen a little bigger. And overall, it seems to be functioning fine. And this is the latest version of Firefox, which is something that you can't get in OS X Lion, which is where this iMac was stuck. Uh, now we'll just open up LibreOffice. This is the... the a variant of uh, or alternative of Microsoft Word. You can see it opened up quickly and everything seems to be working fine uh, with that.
and then the other application that a lot of people seem to use is Microsoft PowerPoint. So we'll go ahead and open up the LibreOffice version of that. And again, that opened up no problem at all. We'll just pick a random theme. And as you can see, it loaded fine. Uh, I was actually very surprised. There's there's really not a lot of lag at all. It's It's like a whole new computer in terms of usability. Here on the control center, this just kind of shows the different things that we can look at here in Ubuntu Mate. So now I'm going to go into Mate tweak really quick and change our desktop environment over to Pantheon, which is going to give us more of a Mac uh, proper look. And then we'll be right back as soon as I get that done. And as you can see here, uh, we now have our <clears throat> dock at the bottom as opposed to our standard GNOME or GNOME uh, environment that we had before that had the bar to the left of the screen. You can see our menu kind of changed up here to give us uh, kind of a pseudo Windows 98 look just at the top of the screen. If we go into the Mate Tweak and click on Panel, this is where you can actually change what your environment looks like. So if I go up and change it from Pantheon and I go up to, let's say, oh, Cupertino, uh, you'll have you'll see that up in the left hand corner it'll actually change the menu, and when we click on it, it'll give us more of a launch pad kind of look. Uh, typically, you need to log out of your environment and log back in for all of the changes to be finalized. But for the purpose of this video, I just want to show you real quick that it is just making some different changes. So you can really customize this to your liking. So I wanted to come back to the Wi-Fi drivers real quick in order to get those working, at least in Ubuntu. Um, no matter what your desktop environment is, you're going to go to your control panel or settings and you're going to click on additional drivers. And it's going to look like this. You should see where it says Broadcom and it, it will say that the, do, the device is not being used. So where it says do not use the device will be checked. You're going to change it to use it and then you'll click apply changes and that should get your Wi-Fi working. In some cases, you might have to actually hook an Ethernet cable up, or you could plug your phone in and use your phone as a hotspot in order to get the, the driver to actually install, uh, but that should work. So we settled on Linux Mint and everything seems to be working. Wi-Fi works, we were able to update it, and we haven't had any issues. So that's it for this one, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.